Hello and welcome to this episode of the SWS Natu Natu series and I'm going to be in conversation with Tejasvini Uma Sudhir and we are going to be discussing the strategies for your computer applications paper which is on the 23rd of March 2023. So Teju, welcome to your own channel. Uh, now why I'm discussing this with Teju is because she's of course pursuing BTEC second year. Uh, in computer science with a specialization in the Internet of Things. Apart from that, when she appeared for her ICSC class 10 examination in 2019, she secured 100 on 100. So in that sense, pretty qualified to be able to guide you uh, on what you should and should not do in the exam on Thursday. So Teju, from what I understand is that you need to use a lot of logic when it comes to the computer applications paper. Rote learning is completely not desirable. And of course, you need to understand the concepts very well. Isn't that the case? Yes, for your entire paper, both section A and section B, it is important that you use a lot of logic. Logic is the most important thing as far as computer applications paper is concerned. So you have a section A and a section B. Yep. Though people say that section A is a lot about, you know, you uh, definitions, you have to keywords keywords, very true. But at the same time, there are a lot of output big based questions and for all the output based questions there's a, there's a lot of logic required because aapke paas to aapke saamne computer nahi rehne wala so you are supposed to actually predict the output there will be a code snippet given and you'll have to actually say what the output of that particular code will be mm -hmm. apart from that you have a section b i would say that section b is the most scoring section it is a 60 mark um, uh, is from section b there are just direct four programs you need to be writing the code for each of those four programs will be on different concepts you have learned through the year in your uh, syllabus. And you need to actually understand the logic uh, according to the program given. You need to be writing the logic and then the code. Um, right. So a lot of logic is required through your paper. All you need to do is have a very calm mind while you're solving. You should yaha, vaha, you should not get distracted while you're doing because there, there's a high chance you will make mistakes when you do that. Okay, so uh, let's do it in reverse. Normally, we talk about the time management strategy towards the end of the video. Let me do that right at the beginning because now you have 20 marks of MCQs. Then you have 10 marks, uh, 10 questions of two marks each. All this is in part A of your paper. And part B, as you said, you have uh, 60 marks, 15 into four questions. There is, of course, a choice as far as part B is concerned. So what I would suggest is that ensure that you finish off the MCQs in about 15 odd minutes. Then the remaining um, uh, 10 questions, you could devote about 25 uh, minutes, which means that in 40 minutes, you should be able to finish off your section A. That leaves you with one hour, 20 minutes for section B. Leaving 10 minutes for revision, you can easily devote about 17 to 18 minutes for each of the programs, each of the four questions that you need to do. Um, and I think going in the same order as the question paper would be advisable. Finish with the MCQs, then the remaining 10 questions, and then part B. Now, uh, how do you think the reading time should ideally be utilized, uh, the 15 minutes of reading time that they get? So what I would say is that in the 15 minutes of reading time, first go to your section B, try to choose which concepts you know, which programs you think you will be able to write the code for. Yeah. That's what I did in my paper. I chose my four questions where I was very sure that I'll be able to easily write the code without spending too much time and thinking ki iska logic kya hoga, is meko pilot of number kya hai pata nahi hai, logic kya hoga. If you know the, uh, four questions directly, choose those four questions in your 15 minutes reading time. Other than that, you go back to your section A and try to see uh, if you know all the concepts in your section A. MCQ sometimes I've seen in the previous papers are slightly tricky. So just go through each of those questions. See and whatever you don't know, keep have a mental note that okay, fine, I have question, question uh, 5 nahi aata hai. So I will think about it again when I'm doing my question paper. I think that's what you do in your 15 minutes of reading time. Okay. So, uh, and as far as the MCQs are concerned, there are 20 of them, uh, which is quite a huge number. I don't think in any other paper uh, in ICSC class 10, you have that many MCQs yeah. to solve. Is there something specific that they should bear in mind while they are tackling the MCQs? See, MCQs are actually very useful because you have four options. Suppose you don't know the answer as well. Computers gives you that option of actually ruling out um, two options or three options. Should so get the elimination the method is what they should be. Elimination method, yeah, exactly. 
elimination method can be adopted in certain questions, especially if they're output type of questions. Of course, theoretical question ho, to aapko pata hi rehna chahiye ki okay, fine, encapsulation ka definition ye hai, to aap data, data hiding nahi likh sakte answer nahi. Hmm. But, you need to, uh, in output type of questions, hmm. there is an option of actually elimination, eliminating the other hmm. options and getting the right answer. But I would still say that if you know the concept, first go for that type of method to get your answer. If it's not, if you think that you don't have the answer, then try to look at the option and try to fit it in the question. Uh, that is one main thing as far as MCQs are concerned. Otherwise, MCQs are actually as uh, similar to normal one to mark questions which used to come when I was writing my board exam. It mm. is not, it's nothing very different. It's the same definitions and output type questions which come in the MCQs as well. Okay. Uh, now let's go to how to how should students use the two-day gap before the examination in order to revise the syllabus and also practice it. So learning and practicing programs that obviously is key to doing well, both as far as section B is concerned and even in section A that would be useful, right? I always felt like computer applications, uh, the approach towards computer applications is very similar to that towards maths. Mm. The key to actually doing well is solving. Mm. You cannot... Up you can't do that. You need to actually be solving. You actually need to be coding. You need to be trying out so that yeah. you actually do well in your uh, paper. Yeah. Right? So, um, like how you must have done in your maths paper, go chapter wise. Solve all the programs in each chapter. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And um, as far as the part A is concerned, the theory, don't skip the theory. Go through the theory under... Uh, I would always say in your textbook, all the solved examples go through that very well because that from that is where the section A output type questions actually come, right? And uh, the behind part of your textbook, go through all the programs and uh, actually execute the programs. Uh, let's go chapter wise. For example, you need to do linear search, binary search, string type programs. So suppose you're uh, doing the strings chapter, you should be knowing what is a pig Latin number, palindrome. So counting the number of words in a sentence, spaces in the sentence, using character wrapper class methods to count the number of letters, digits, spaces, mm -hmm. frequency of a character in a given string. So all those different concepts, you know, what happens that when you look at a particular chapter, you should know, okay, okay, fine, yeah, yeah, concept hai. In this basis a question a sakta hai. You know, you should have a mental map on how you will be going through the uh, going through the entire syllabus. For example, you have linear search and binary search. Then you have the different sorting techniques. Know the technique and solve at least two or three programs in each technique before going to your paper so that your, the concept and the way of solving is actually very clear in your head. Okay, fine. Uh... Teju has uh, done some videos already, which you would find on the playlist out here. And uh, she has promised to take out some time from her classes and record some more videos in the run-up to your uh, exams. And I hope she keeps her promise. Uh, are there any usual mistakes that students make, which probably your batch made or uh, students generally make, which they should be a little wary of? I think the most common mistake made across batches is that not taking care of the syntax. It's the mm. most basic thing. The first thing that is taught in your uh, when you are starting off with computer applications is that up uh, semicolon name the brackets. Such things you need to be very meticulously taking care of. That you know, when you're finishing a particular statement, you do not forget the semicolon. Writing when the keywords start, in small case. Exactly, writing the keywords in small case. Um, when you're starting off a method, you need to, with a with a bracket, you need to be ending it. Hmm. Such things actually play a very important role because you should keep in mind that at the end of the day, it's a it's a computer applications, right? Hmm. So, job yep. up your answer like the answer key and uh, answer sheet me when you're trying to execute that in a computer, you should actually get the output. Otherwise, you're not going to get marks. Uh, another thing I would um, say uh, you have to remember is that comments. Comments are very important because. Comments basically uh, are to explain to the examiner what you're writing in your code. Suppose, uh, see, there are multiple ways of solving a particular question, right? Mm. There are multiple um, uh, methods you can use, right? The examiner may have thought of a, a particular method. Your method may be different. 
So to explain to the examiner what you are trying to convey, using of comments is very useful. And even if they do not um, directly understand from your code, with the help of comments, they'll be able to understand and give you marks. That is one thing. Second thing is that, um, suppose you're writing a question in which you're trying to find the number of words in a string. Use variables which are related to the program. Suppose you want to use a counter variable to count every time you find a new uh, word in the particular mm -hmm. sentence. Mm -hmm. Use count as the variable. Don't say Raju is equal to one. Raju is equal to zero. Use va use uh, variable names which are related to the program you're using it for. That is point number one. Two, don't use very complicated variable names. Something which you can you yourself will find it difficult if you were the uh, read you were, if you were reading the program. Yeah. Third thing which I would actually advise is that write a variable description, right? Other than the comments, something additional you can do is that write a variable description that many a variable, the, what each variable signifies. If you write, it, it's actually useful for the examiner to actually understand. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you're explaining how you're doing the particular question to the examiner. Okay. Uh, other than that, uh, always keep a uh, uh, note of the keywords. Always write uh, the mm -hmm. keywords in how it is given in a lower case. Um, uh, that is very important. For example, when you're writing class and the name of the class, write C-L-A-S-S -S in lower case, uh, public static void main. All of that, please make sure to do it correctly according to the syntax. Okay, so from what you're telling me, there's so much of detail, it's very obvious that the revision time at the end, the five to 10 minutes becomes extremely important because you browse through the entire Absolutely. paper all over again to ensure that you have not made, left out any semicolon or put anything in caps instead of small uh, case, etc. Uh, so uh, the general strategy when you are writing the paper, apart from the fact that you follow the same order, even while uh, you are revising over the next two days, it is obviously very important to keep writing as much as possible so that you get used to uh, doing the same thing in the examination hall, isn't it? Absolutely. And as you very rightly said, the last uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, please ensure you leave so that you can actually revise the entire paper. It is very uh, easy to actually, uh, you know, miss out on uh, something which you could easily get marks in. So that 10 last 10, 15 minutes, don't just go through. Okay, fine, I have question, kar diya, question kar diya. look at every step you have done. Ensure that you have not left out anything because of which you could possibly lose marks. And... Um, do you usually get time to attempt an extra question? Is there sufficient time? To I remember it? that I wrote an extra question because see, if you're very good, if you are, um, if you're, you're fast at logic, you'll be able to actually write the program very quickly. Okay, mm. because they're not very big programs. Mm. The program at max will take, uh, I mean, even if you say one page per program, yeah. you will get time to actually write an extra question. But your focus should not be about writing an extra question. Please ensure that you have the 10-15 minutes to that is most important. Don't extra question, extra question. Give your best shot when you're writing the questions which you need to write. If you really have the time, do write an extra question. And in section A, again, I would write like to reiterate that you need to keep in mind that keywords are very important. Uh, when you're writing a definition, uh, don't write the definition with language which you generally use to explain use the keywords given in the textbook uh in the previous years one thing which people very often realize is that you know ek to, jo question mein diya hai, wahi repeat kar dete hai, answer key mein. Hmm. or they don't write the keywords hmm. which because of which people tend to lose marks okay great very useful tejo i hope uh, students listening to this are able to take points from this and be able to implement it both during revision as well as while they are writing the examination. Thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to the next videos. This is my way of putting pressure on Tejo that videos, Bejo, videos, Bejo. Okay. Right. Right. Thank you. Bye. Tata.